Hello everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel Modern Tech. I am Varun Moria and in today's video we are going to learn about the hardware part of the CPU cabinet and all the components inside that cabinet. So stay in this video till end to learn more about all the components of CPU. So let's start our video. First of all, what is a CPU cabinet? A CPU cabinet also known as a computer case or tower. It is the outer cell that encloses and protects the internal components of a computer. It is a crucial part of any computer system as it provides physical support, cooling and protection for the components inside. There are mainly three types of CPU cabinets available in the market right now. These are, first one is desktop cases. These are the most common types of CPU cabinets used in personal computers. They usually sit upright on the desk and come in various sizes, ranging from small form factor cases to full size towers. This case offers ample space for additional components and can accommodate multiple hard drives, graphic cards and cooling solutions. Now on second number, we have small form factor cases. These cases are designed to be compact and take up less space on your desk or workstation. They are suitable for people who want a powerful computer but have a limited space. Small form factor cases can be cube sized, flat or slim and they usually have limited space for additional components means you can't install some extra components or cooling solutions inside that. Now on number third, we have rack mount cases. These cases are used mainly in server rooms or data centers where multiple computers are stored in a rack. These cases are designed to be mounted on the standard rack and they are usually long and narrow. Rack mount cases are ideal for business and organizations that need to store a large number of computers in a small space. Overall, the type of CPU cabinet you choose will depend on your specific need and requirement, such as the number of components you need to install, the available space and your budget. Now let's take a look at the different part of the CPU cabinet. On number one, we have PSU. PSU stands for Power Supply Unit. Power Supply Unit is a essential component of computer system that converts AC alternating current power from the wall outlet into DC that is direct current that is required by the computer internal components such as the motherboard, processor and memory. It is responsible for providing a steady and reliable flow of power to these components ensuring that they operate correctly. The PSU typically sits inside the computer case and is connected to the wall outlet through a power cord. It then provides power to the other internal components through cables that are connected to the motherboard and other hardware components of the CPU cabinet. There are several important factors to consider when choosing a PSU for a computer system. The first is the wattage rating, which refers to the maximum power output of the PSU. This rating should be sufficient to power all the components in your computer system and it's a good idea to choose a power with a slightly higher voltage rating that you need to allow for future upgrade. The efficiency of the PSU is also an important consideration as more efficient PSU will, will waste less power as heat and therefore generate less heat, run cooler and use less electricity. This efficiency is typically measured as a percentage with higher percentage indicating a more efficient PSU. Another important factor is the form factor which refer to the physical size and shape of the PSU. The most common form factor is ATX, which is used in most personal computers. Other form factors include SFX, TFX and others, which are used in smaller or specialized computer cases. The PSU is a critical component of a computer system that provides power to all the internal components. When choosing a PSU, you should consider the voltage rating, efficiency and form factor to ensure that it meets the power requirement of your system and fit properly in your computer case. Now on number second, we have motherboard. A motherboard is also known as a main board or system board. It is a printed circuit board that connects and control all the other components in the computer system. It acts as a central hub that allow all the other components to communicate with each other and work together seamlessly. The motherboard is typically located at the bottom of the computer case and it's connected to the power supply, storage device, graphic cards and other components through cables and connectors. It provides the necessary connections and interface 
for the other components to communicate with each other and the CPU. The motherboard have several important components that work together to ensure that the computer system operates smoothly. So these components include first is CPU socket. CPU socket is a connector that allows the CPU to be mounted on the motherboard. It provides a secure connection between the CPU and the motherboard, allowing the CPU to communicate with other components in the system. On second number, it is mother memory slot. The memory slots are connected that allow memory modules to be inserted into the motherboards. They provide a connection between the memory modules and the CPU, allowing the CPU to access and manipulate data storage in memory. On third number, we have expansion slots. The expansion slots are connectors that allow additional components such as graphic card, sound cards, and network cards to be added to the system. They provide a connection between the expansion card and the motherboard, allowing the expansion cards to communicate with the other components in the system. On fourth number, we have chipset. The chipset is a group of electronic components on the motherboard that controls and manages the flow of a data between the CPU, memory, and other components. It also provides interface for peripheral devices such as USB ports, SATA connectors, and Ether Ethernet ports. Now on fifth number, we have BIOS. BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System. It is a firmware program that is stored on a chipset on the motherboard. It provides the initial instruction for the computer system to boot up, configure the hardware, and restart the operating system. The motherboard is a critical component of a computer system that connects and controls all the other components. It provides the necessary interface and connections from the CPU, memory, expansion slots, and other components to communicate with each other and work together seamlessly. Now, on third number, we have processor. A processor, also known as a CPU, Central Processing Unit. It is the brain of the computer system. It is responsible for performing calculations and executing instructions that enables a computer to perform various tasks and run software applications. The processor is a small chip that is located on the motherboard and is typically covered by a heat sink and fan to dissipate heat. It consists of millions of transistors that are organized into circuit and perform different functions, such as fetching instructions, decoding them, and executing them, and storing data. The performance of a chip processor is measured by its clock speed, which is the number of cycles it can perform in seconds. It is measured in gigahertz, and it's indication of how fast the CPU or processor can execute instructions. However, the clock speed is not only the factor that determines the performance of a processor. The processor also has a multiple core, which are essentially independent processors that can work together to perform tasks faster. The number of cores can range from two to dozens, depending on the types of processor. The more core a processor, the more tasks it can perform simultaneously, make it faster and more efficient. Another important factor that determines the performance of a processor is its cache. The cache is a small amount of memory that is built with the processor and it's used to store frequent access data and instructions. The cache helps the processor to access data faster and improving overall system performance. There are several types of processors available in the market, including the Intel and AMD processors. The processors are designed to be compatible with different types of motherboards and have different clock speeds, number of cores, and cache site. Some processors also have built-in graphic processing unit, GPUs, which can eliminate the need for a separate graphic card in a computer system. A processor is a critical component of a computer system that provides calculations and execution instructions. It is measured by clock speed and number of cores and cache sites and can significantly impact the overall performance of a computer system. Now on number 4, we have hard disk. Hard disk was also known as hard disk drive that is HDD. It is a storage device used in computers to store and retrieve data. It consists of one or more rotating disks that are coated with a magnetic material and a read and write head that can read and write data to the disk. The disk is a hard drive are typically made of metal or glass and are coated with a magnetic material. The read write head 
hovers over the disk and can move back and forth across the disk to read and write data. The read-write head is controlled by a motor that spins the disk at a high speed, typically around 5400 to 7200 RPM, that is rounds per minute. Data is stored on a hard drive in sectors and tags. A sector is the smallest unit of data that can be stored or written into the hard disk. And a track is concrete in circle on the disk when data is stored. The read-write head can access data on the disk by moving to the correct track and sector. Hard drives are available in different capabilities, ranging from a few gigabytes to several terabytes. The capacity of a, of a hard disk refers to the amount of data it can store. The larger the capacity, the more data the hard drive can store. There are two types of hard disk, internal and external. Internal hard drives are installed inside a computer system and are connected to the motherboard. External hard disks are connected to the computer system using a USB or other type of interface or connector. Hard disk has been a popular storage device for many years due to the large capacity, low cost and reliability. However, they are prone to failure due to mechanical components and can be affected for physical shock or magnetic interface. Now on 6th number, we have RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. It is a type of computer memory that temporarily restores data and instructions that the computer is actively using. RAM is often referred to as the computer's working memory because it is used to store data that the computer needs to access quickly. RAM is a volatile memory which means that it loses its content when the power is turned off. This is in the contact to the non-volatile storage devices such as hard disk drive and solid state drives, which retain their contents even when the power is turned off. RAM is made up of a, made up of a series of memory chips that are typically installed on the computer's motherboard. The amount of RAM installed in a computer affects its overall performance as more RAM allows the computer to store and access more data and instructions at once. The speed of RAM is measured in megahertz or zigahertz and determines how quickly the computer can access the data stored in RAM. The capacity of RAM is measured in gigabytes and determines how much data can be stored in RAM at once. There are different types of RAMs including SDRAM, DDR, DDR2, DDR3 and DDR4. And now on market DDR5 is also available. This is the latest version of RAM available on the market right now. These different types of RAMs have different speeds and are not compatible with each other. The type of RAM that a computer uses is determined by the computer's motherboard and processor. Now on 7th number, we have a GPU, known as Graphics Processing Unit or Graphic Card. It is a specialized electronic circuit designed to quickly process and manipulate images and videos. It is an essential component of modern computers and is primarily responsible for rendering images and animation on display. A GPU consists of thousands of small processing units that work in a parallel to perform complex calculations needed to render high-quality graphics. Unlike a CPU, which is designed for a general-purpose computing, a GPU is designed specifically for graphics-related tasks, such as rendering 3D models, encoding and decoding video, and running high-performance applications like gaming and artificial intelligence. The performance of a GPU is measured in terms of its clock speed, the number of processing units, and the amount of memory it has. The clock speed determines how quickly the GPU can perform calculations, while the number of processing units determines how many calculations it can perform simultaneously. The amount of memory determines how much data the GPU can store and manipulate. GPU can be integrated into the computer's motherboard as it is cased with integrated graphics or they can be separate cards that plug into the motherboard known as discrete graphic card. Discrete graphic cards offer higher performance than integrated graphics and are often used in graphics and professional working. In recent years, GPU have become an important tool for executing complex calculations in areas such as machine learning and artificial intelligence. GPUs are well suited for these tasks because they can perform large number of parallel calculations quickly and efficiently. Now on number 8, we have expansion slots. An expansion slot is a socket on a computer motherboard or other circuit boards that allows the installation of an expansion card or module. 
expansion cards are electronic components that adds new feature or capability to a computer. These cards can be inserted into the expansion slot to extend or enhance the functionality of the computer. There are several types of expansion slots including PCI, it stands for Peripheral Computer Interconnected. This is a standard expansion slot used for heading device such as sound card, network card and video captured card. On second number we have PCIe that is Peripheral Computer Interconnected Express. This is a newer and faster version of the PCI slot. PCIe slots are used for high speed devices such as graphic cards, solid state drives and higher performance network adapters. Now on third number we have AGP that is Accelerated Graphic Port. This is a dedicated expansion slot used for graphic cards. AGP slots are now obsolete and have been replaced by PCIe slot. Now fourth number we have ISA that is Industry Standard Architecture. This is an older type of expansion slot that was commonly used in 1980s and 1990s for adding devices such as modems and sound cards. The number and type of expansion cards on motherboard depends on the motherboard's form factor and design. Larger motherboards such as ATX and EATX typically have more expansion slots than smaller motherboards such as Micro ATX and Mini ATX. When installing an expansion card, the card is inserted into the appropriate expansion slot and secured with a screw or ledge. The card is then connected to a computer power supply and any necessary cables such as those for audios and videos. Now on number 9, we have cooling fans. Cooling fans are essential component of a computer system that helps dissipate heat generated by the various components including the CPU, graphic card and power supply. Excess heat can cause these components to malfunction leads to reduce performance and even permanent damage. Cooling fans work by drawing cool air into the computer case and expelling hot air out of the case. There are several cooling fans including case fans, CPU fans, graphic card fans and power supply fans. Cooling fans are typically powered by the computer power supply or motherboard and are controlled by the computer BIOS or operating system. The speed of the fan can be adjusted based on the temperature of the computer components ensuring that the fan operates at an optimal speed to keep the components cooled while minimizing noise. A CPU cabinet or computer case is a crucial component of a computer system that houses and protects the various hardware components from the power supply unit and motherboard to the CPU RAM and storage devices. Each hardware component plays an important role in the overall performance of the system. By selecting a suitable CPU cabinet and properly installing and maintaining the hardware components, users can ensure that their computer system operates at optimal performance level and lasts for years to come. So, whether you are building a new system or from scratch or upgrading an existing one, understanding the hardware components that go into a CPU cabinet can help you make informed decisions and maximize the potential of your computer system. So, in this video, I have explained you a number of important components and hardware for our CPU, but in market, there are too many other components and hardware parts are available, but those parts are not that, that much important for your CPU system. But these parts are the most important and crucial part of our computer system because we, without these parts, your computer can't run. Thank you for watching. If you like our video, then please like, share and subscribe our channel. So that's all for today. If you like our video, then please give up a thumbs up and Please share our video and if you are new then please subscribe to our channel for such amazing content in future. Thanks for watching.